Morning, everybody. Um, welcome along to my championship week match day 16 uh, review. So, uh, again, like always, run through all the championship scores, give my opinion as well, and see what really what teams done well, which teams haven't done well, to, haven't done too well this weekend, and run through all the scores as I said, and give my opinion. So, in the in the first game, we're going to start off with the seven side derby. And the Wolves vs Fulham game, we've got a, a 10 minute preview a review video just on that game alone. So, if any Fulham or Wolves fans want to watch that, that's the latest upload of um, the one up prior to this one. So there's about a 10 minute um, preview there. So if you're going to go and watch that one, then you can. But this one here, we're going to start off with a seven side derby. It was Bristol City. They beat Cardiff 2 1. Good result for Bristol City in terms of them keeping tabs on the top three in the top automatic promotion places. They're sit currently now sitting fourth in the championship table. And they, they ground out a good result. Goals from Callum O'Dowder and Aidan Flynn, either side of an Omar Bogle equaliser. Omar Bogle equaliser gave uh, Bristol City the bragging, bragging rights in terms of the first uh, seven side derby of the season. Um, Bristol City played quite well. It was a typical derby game. Plenty of fire. A couple of interesting decisions as well, you know. Probably um, Bristol City should have had a man sent off in the first half. In the second half, Marlon Packles probably should have got a second in the car for his tackle. But then Omar Bogle got a thoroughly deserved uh, straight red for his tackle on... Uh, I can't remember who it was, but it was a terrible tackle. Both, could have, both should have really both got sent off, really. But Bristol City played some good stuff. O'Dowd just scored a nice goal. He's playing really well at the moment. I was quite impressed with him when we played them on Tuesday night. He really looks, looks a really good player. They got their second goal from a long throw into the box as well. Which is a, it just shows they can play good football and they've got the ability to mix it up and go a little bit more direct. Halder Magnusson put a big long throw into the box and then Aiden Flint just comes in unmarked with a powerful header. Then the equaliser at 1-1 for Cardiff. It was a good finish from Bogle. Into, into the box and sticks it under Frankie Fielding quite nicely. It's not too much panic station for Cardiff, I don't think. I think they'll do quite well this year, but it's just interesting to see how they build on this now. It's a positive result for Bristol City. So in the second game, Aston Villa 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. It was pretty important, an absolute screamer of a goal from Adam Reach, straight from the kickoff. I mean, you can, it was an amazing finish. Direct ball over the top. Adam Reach picks up, must be at least about 30 yards out, from, out of goal. I think he just controlled it lovely and smacks it on the half volley, straight over Sam Johnson's head. And within the first minute, Sheffield Wednesday took the lead. They then took the lead, doubled their lead through Jordan Rhodes. He scored two goals in two games. Better wait, I think eight months it was for his goal against Millwall. And then, like, Buster's two goals come along in two games for him. He's starting to recreate some form. He's probably, they're probably going to need Sheffield Wednesday in terms of trying to get into a, a, a better position than they have been. And John Terry did go off injured in this game. I think he's broke his metatarsal, I think it's. So he could be out for a, a good couple of months, probably uh, might return to the new year. That's going to be a big loss for, um, for Aston Villa. They brought Christopher Samba as a substitute, and he looked a bit. He just doesn't look really like the centre half. They need to go to pair up against with James Chester. I felt like Terry and Chester formed a good partnership at Villa under Steve Bruce, and it's going to be a big loss for for Aston Villa in terms of their big steely core at the back. He's a good leader, John Terry. Lots of the youngsters look up to him. He's a good vocal leader. Played quite well so far for Villa as well since joining from Chelsea. So it's a good win for Wednesday. The Carver Howe out may be starting to starting to dwindle a bit now. He's starting to pick up some good results. Aston Villa is not really too much of a pattern, not too much of a worry for them. Really, they should be okay, in my opinion. So into the second game, Barnsley 2, Birmingham 0. Fantastic result for Barnsley after following up to that midweek win at Burton, the 4-2 win there. They follow up here with a comfortable home win against Birmingham. Barnsley starting to turn it around now. 19 points, I think it is now. They're starting to put themselves put some daylight between them and the relegation zones this season. And it was always going to be a tough season for Barnsley, losing some of their crucial players last season. And they've added, again, some good young players. I like the way um, Paul Kim Bottom and the, and the regime down at Barnsley signed some good young players. Lots of Cameron McGee who's come up from League 2. Brad Potts as well. Both were part of a very good promotion challenge for Blackpool and Luke, respectively, last season. Both, both, both proving that they are capable of playing in the championship. Obviously, Tom Bradshaw scored another goal. He's going to be crucial in terms of Barnsley and where they finish this season as well. And for Birmingham, it's a bit of a worry, really. Steve Cottrell, I think he's the right man for the job, but I think he needs, needs to get he needs, he needs time. They can't afford to sack sack him straight away. He needs time to bed in, get get his message across. He hasn't been in charge for too long. I think he's the right man in terms of restoring passion and on, onto the pitch. And I think just for that reason, I need to stick with him. I know they're in the, in the relegation zone. For a big club like Birmingham, it shouldn't be the case. But if they stick with him, they'll, over time, I need to see results. Something which modern football clubs don't give enough time to for managers, in my opinion. Then moving to the next game, Bolton 2, Norwich 1. Bit of a shock for me, Bolton here. Playing some good stuff. I think it's now unbeaten in four or five games now. Starting to put a good streak together. Two points at Fulham, followed by another point at Sunderland in midweek. Adding to this now, the big three points against Norwich. Gary Redeem got one of the first got, got, got his goal in the first in this game. I think Gary Redeem scored. And Norwich was a bit of a surprise, really. After the, the way they've been playing recently, I really expect them to go up to Bolton, give a Bolton, give a strong, well-organised and well-drilled Bolton side a game here and try and really press them and try and really build on what they've been doing so far. 
A couple of defeats against Derby and Wolves at home either side in the space of four days didn't help. So number third straight defeat for Norwich now. And you've really got to start to wonder, are they really seriously, are they serious promotion contenders this season? If they have, to, if they want to be, they need to try and get some more consistency going to their results. But basically, they, what they need to do is put up another good run of results prior to what they did after the after the Ipswich game. Prior to that, when they obviously won a good little run and then went on to beat Ipswich as well. Haven't the format hasn't materialised after that, which is a bit of a surprise. You probably think you beat your local rivals, it's a big turning point in your season, but it hasn't been that for Norwich this season. And in terms of Bolton, they come off bottom spot now, starting to push up now in the field Parkinson, getting a good unbeaten run together. Accumulating points on the board after a sloppy start. Scoring goals now, torch for something they didn't do at the start of the season. So that's only going to stand them in good stead. So move, moving on, Derby 4, Derby 2, I mean, Reading 4. Bit of a shock result here in this one for me. Derby going down 4 2 against Reading. Reading played fantastically well in this, in this game. Played on the counter attack quite well, utilised the likes of Mo, Mo Barrow, Aluko, and basically some of their quick, quicker players really stretched Reading. Liam Moore got the first goal here. Good header from a corner with Terry Butcher bandage around his head. It's a good signing at centre half. And Luko took his goal very well as well. He came inside of a good, typical Luko-style goal. Good weaving run and drilled it in the bottom corner. Mo Barrow got a third goal as well. And in terms of Reading, it's a, they may be starting to see what Yaps down. He's starting to maybe get a good tune out of them. Going to Leeds and Derby this season, getting six points, and that's fantastic for them. Not the best start this season. Suffering from playoff hangovers, as I've mentioned before. But in terms of pushing on now, they may be starting to see a bit more of an effect from Yaps down. Spent a lot of money in the summer trying to get good players in, trying to add to what they did last year after just falling at the final hurdle in terms of promotion. And this result's only going to do nothing but boost the confidence, in my opinion. Against the Derby side, he built up some fantastic results prior to this game. As, as I said before, it's a bit of a shock seeing Derby go down in this game. Didn't expect it, really. And they've got Fulham next start in this national break. And that would be a huge game for them in terms of what they how, what they can go on to achieve further on down the line this season. So moving to the next game, Ipswich 3, Preston and Neil. Good result for Ipswich, bouncing back again after a defeat in midweek against Cardiff. Preston haven't been playing too well recently. It's been a bit of a bit of a, bit of a shock really for me in terms of how good they've done. Got a fantastic start to the season. Solidified the playoff place as well. That's starting to slip a bit now. Starting to fall into the top half now. Ipswich is a good result for them. Needed this win as well. And... They're moving, along, they're moving along quite nicely. They started Bus Ancelina, which I felt was crucial in terms of them trying to, eat, uh, trying to score more goals at home. Martin Wackle got his eighth for the season as well. What a good signing he's been from Rangers. Him and Joe Garner have proven that they've come back into the, English, into the championship. No problems with settling because they've played in this league before. They know what this league's about. And Ancelina as well, proving that he's a fantastic addition from Man City on loan. Getting the game time he probably deserves now as well. And for Preston, it's probably going to be a bit of a... Probably against the international break and regroup after a couple of sloppy results against Brentford, against Villa, and most recently against Ipswich as well. So they need to regroup, rally the troops, and get into the international break. But they've been quite cruel of injuries. I think Sean Maguire's out for a while now with a hamstring, one of their better players in the counter attack. So they need to get into the, into the, into the international break, regroup, and go again afterwards. So going to the next game, Millwall nil, Burton won. I think it's only Burton's second goal away from home this season. Fantastic result for them. Nigel Clough said that the luck had been going, the luck had been going against them this season. Couple of, I think only a couple of points picked up last month in October, so it wasn't the best month for them. Nigel Clough did come out and say as well that he, they didn't, he thought they didn't deserve to lose games. They've been a bit unlucky this season in terms of some of their performances as well. And Millwall, a bit of a shock for Millwall in my opinion. I thought they'd have probably beaten Burton. Played really well away from home in my, in my opinion against uh, Sheffield Wednesday and, and Cardiff as well. You know, all right, they come short short against Sheffield Wednesday, but got a good point at Cardiff. Narrowly defeated at Sheffield Wednesday, showing signs of real. Real good, con you know, longevity in this division, in my opinion, and it's going to stand them in good stead. However, Marvin Sordell got the winning goal for Burton, and that massive three points is pushing them out of the relegation zone now as well, and it's absolutely crucial for them. So, into the next game, Nottingham Forest 4, QPR 0. Big result for Forest in terms of trying to really solidify, in to try and get into the playoffs this season under Mark Warburton. Playing some good stuff this season as well. Getting the ball down, lots of Kieran Dow, Barry Mackay, some astute signings this season scoring for fun in the league as well Guess to keep the offside, side he beat two good promotion contenders in Wolves and Sheffield United in the space of four days both at home bit of a surprise to see him get walloped at, um, at Forest but this summed up the championship really how any team could beat anybody and it's not really much of a surprise in terms of the way QPR can be a little bit inconsistent at times so moving on Sheffield United 4 hole 1 massive massive scoreline for Sheffield United Leon, Leon Clark with four goals in this game well, I mean he's been fantastic this season Many pundits have said that they probably didn't expect him, Liam Clark to have these type of performances left in him. And he's getting to that 31, 32 stage, I think, now. So he's only come into the, the autumn of his career, but is he heck? He's playing absolutely fantastic. The likes of him and Billy Sharp forming a, a formidable partnership up front. And it's good to see. Hull went to the lead in this game for a Camille Grosicki strike. Really good strike. Maybe Simon Walker done a bit more uh, long distance strike in my, in, from about 25 yards. Simon Moore didn't really react to it late and went over his head in, into the top corner. But Sheffield United now really starting to 
solidifying the automatic promotion this promotion places this season. It's nothing but a fantastic result for them. So moving on, Brentford three leads one in this game. What a game this was! Tell with two goalkeeper mistakes. Shoddy floodlights, apparently. Uh, the, um, Andy Lonergan, I think someone said, one of the Leeds players said, the floodlights are too bright. Lonergan made a howler in the first half, tried to catch the ball. Ended up, his legs lost, lost balance, dropped the ball, and Neil Mappe went and got his second goal in two games. Good result for Brentford, showing some real good fighting spirit now, pushing on up the table as well. Not phased by the, the bigger size in this division like Leeds, who haven't been playing too well themselves, a bit inconsistent at the moment, and they need to really try and pick up some form if they want to try and get anywhere, in the, in the, any, anywhere near the playoffs like they did last year. And finally, moving on, it's a, 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 a supposedly local derby between Middlesbrough and Sunderland. Not the best of games. Middlesbrough went ran out one 0 winners for a Marcus Tavernier a first half strike. And I thought Sunderland, Sunderland didn't play too bad today. They probably could have deserved a draw in this game, but in terms of the way they're playing, not creating many chances in my opinion. They had some good ones in the first half. A couple of top stops from Darren, Darren Randolph, who had a bit of difficulty with the sun in his eyes in the first half. Good result for Sunderland um, for. Middlesbrough, sorry, and they look to try to press on now to try and get into the playoff places. Starting to get into their groove now this season after a slow start. And I think Sunderland hit the bottom of the table now. So, but all this, it's, the, the, the performance today wasn't too bad. They've got plenty of positives to take from that, but they need to get a manager soon. It's going to get some, you know, if they just want to need some, need some stability soon, they need to get a manager in. So, yeah, guys, there's my Championship Match Day 16 review. If you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new for more EFL content, and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.